well friends now we are here in the second lecture in the first lecture we discussed briefly about the food its constituents and functions of the constituents now in this lecture i would like to give you a brief overview of the quality and safety aspects of food food quality is a very very complex concept it includes the properties like taste texture appearance nutritional value and safety these properties must be evaluated in order to assess or assure the quality of raw and processed foods these quality attributes may be evaluated by subjective or sensory methods or objective like instrumental or chemical methods the sensory quality of food may be classified according to the major senses by which they are perceived subjective or sensory evaluation of food generally uses the human sense organs for taste smell mouth feel etc for these group of consumers or even trained panelists may be used in preference testing for marketing purposes and scoring using standard sensory test procedures or protocols sensory evaluation however is a expensive process and is time consuming process although it is highly desirable particularly when the food or a new food is to be introduced in the market so before that it is always desirable that it must be tested by human individuals or by consumers for its attributes objective evaluation of food normally involves instruments and these instrumental analysis or chemical analysis may generally ease the processes objective evaluation may use imitative or non imitative measurements of sensory properties you see when the food material when it is produced and before it goes to the table for consumption it has to pass through different stages in this slide i have given you the stages in the food value chain that is starting from the raw material or actual raw material or ideal raw material to the consumption so suppose we take that an actual raw material should have a potential quality maybe here we take x value then the actual raw material which we get this itself may be little inferior than that of the quality which we wanted in the ideal raw material and this may be because of the different reasons that is the agronomical practices environmental practices horticultural practices etc or that is occur in the field or other factors it may result that actual raw material which we get that is little inferior to the quality and then you can see here that is in except for the case where by appropriate selection of the material proper material and its blending and formulation in proper proportion otherwise in each and every stage there is reduction in the quality that is whether process in processing packaging further processing storage in factory distribution to depots 
etcetera etcetera that each and every step there is a great potential for the loss in quality of the food because the food is actually a material in the last class also we saw that it is a has different chemicals there are various biochemicals there are certain bioactive agents enzymes microorganisms and all these have constant and continuous interactions during all these stages and therefore they bring about changes in the different constituents of the food so you can see here that in the actual quality of the consumed product it generally much less than what was to be perceived in the potential quality of the ideal raw material so all these changes in the quality that is whether it is a microbiological change enzymatic change physical change chemical change or so on all this can be minimized can be accelerated and that is what we do in the processing by appropriate selection of process parameter or other parameters during storage and handling we try to keep these changes as minimum as possible that is so that the food quality is retained to the maximum extent now the undesirable changes in food quality attributes the texture due to one or the other reason there may be loss of solubility loss of water holding capacity the food may become tough it may become soft what are the reason for all these things in fact in the throughout the course whenever things comes we will be discussing about the various aspects but these are the a general trend i am just telling which might happen in the case of flavor due to one or the other reason depending upon the components present in the food depending upon the factors which are there during processing and handling there may be development of rancidity both either hydrolytic rancidity or oxidative rancidity there may be development of cooked or caramel flavor or other of flavors might be developed in the food regarding undesirable changes in the color of the food during processing handling and storage etc there may be darkening the color may bleach or there may be altogether a new color undesirable color might develop in the food similarly there might be certain undesirable changes in the nutritional value of the food as well and these might be because of the loss or degradation of vitamins minerals proteins lipid etc now the changes that occur whether in the quality attribute or in the nutritional value except that those which occur in the nutritional value the others are readily evident to the consumer however all these changes are microscopic changes arising from the microscopic or chemical changes in the product during processing and storage now a brief about how these changes take place so as i told you in the earlier slide that the food contains various bioactive agents chemical agents biochemical agents enzymatic factors and other even physical factors so when the food is transported when it is handled when it is exposed to various conditions during processing etc it comes across various reactions that is the different reactions take place in the food and these reactions actually change the quality of the food these reactions major reactions may be non enzymatic browning enzymatic browning lipid hydrolysis oxidation protein denaturation cross linking 
protein hydrolysis, oligo and polysaccharide hydrolysis, polysaccharide synthesis, degradation of certain natural pigments, glycolytic changes and so on. And each reactions that we saw, they can involve different reactants or substrates depending upon the specific food and the particular conditions for processing and storage. And they are treated as reaction classes, because the general nature of these substrates or reactants are similar for all foods. For example, non enzymatic browning involves reaction of carbonyl compounds, which arise from different diverse reactions like oxidation of ascorbic acid, hydrolysis of starch etcetera. Similarly, lipid oxidation may involve primary triglycerides in one food or phospholipids in other food, but the oxidation of unsaturated fatty acid in the is the primary event. Here, I have given you a brief overview of the chemical interactions among the major food constituents and which ultimately bring about certain changes in the quality. And these changes may be desirable, these changes even may be undesirable. So, here in this slide mostly I have uh, given you that uh, the changes which are generally undesirable, okay. but the similar set of reactions are also there which lead to the desirable changes. So, you see in any food material the three major pools are lipid, carbohydrate and protein. So, lipids it may come across to oxygen, heat or other catalysts and it may be converted into peroxide. These peroxides may interact with proteins and the protein may get converted into its oxidized form. Similarly, carbohydrate pool of the food, it may come across various factors like heat, strong acid, strong base right? and it may converted into get converted into different reactive carbonyls. These reactive carbonyls further may interact with pigments, vitamins, flavors and finally, result to a flavor of color, loss of nutritive value, loss of color etcetera. Okay. Even these peroxides may also react with or interact with reactive carbonyls. Protein pool may directly interact with reactive carbonyls and the chain may follow or even proteins depending upon the intermediate water activity availability or even to ambient to elevated temperatures when they are exposed to they may directly get degraded or they may interact with pigments, vitamins, flavors and finally, this results to change in the flavor, color, nutritive value or taste and so on. Now, let us see what are the various desirable changes in quality which might take or which generally take place during processing of a food. Okay. When the food is exposed to certain factors during processing, many changes can occur, many desirable changes can occur. These changes can influence the sensory properties, functional properties or nutritional value of the food. And a few such changes include development or preservation of pleasing colors and flavors, improvement of preservation of texture, improvement of the functionality of food ingredients, inactivation or controls of enzymes and microorganisms or inactivation of anti nutritional substances or other approaches for improving the nutritional value. Now, the development 
or preservation of pleasing color and flavor during processing. And there are different examples in the food to this effect. That is, the desirable color and flavor can develop in food during the processing of food tissues like meat, coffee beans, nuts, olives, etc. The coffee bean, you see, when it is harvested, it does not have its characteristics, flavor or color, but during the roasting process, the color and flavor develops. Similarly, in processing of fabricated foods like bakery products, confectionery products, snack foods, breakfast cereals, etc., you see how the bread differs in taste and flavor from its uh, raw material, wheat flour, or maida. Fermentation in fermentation processes like cheese, alcoholic beverages, etc., you see, you can easily notice that what are the desirable changes. Even the fruits, when they ripen, many desirable changes, the fruits becomes good in color, it becomes sweet and many other. Also, there are disruption of various plant tissues in the food, which finally gives desirable color and flavor. Also, the preservation of color and flavor is often achieved by addition of certain chemicals like antioxidant, etcetera, or it may be achieved by removal of undesirable components from the food. Like for example, glucose is removed from egg white to retard the browning of the dried product before it is put to the thermal processing or heating or drying, the egg white is given certain treatment or even sometime it is microbiological, it is uh, allowed to act upon sir, by certain microorganisms which eat away the glucose from it. So, it retards the browning reaction. Yes. Improvement or preservation of texture, examples of desirable modification of the texture in food during processing include softening of the plant tissues by heat, forming of plant tissues through the action of calcium and indigenous pectin methyl esterase, tenderization of meat by addition of proteases, development of desirable texture in meat analogs, gelling, coagulation or firming of egg products, coatings and bakery products by heat, formation of cheese by the development or addition of acid to milk. Even certain hydrolytic reactions, many of which are enzyme catalyzed, appear predominantly among the processes that cause softening of texture of the food. E examples of improved functionality of processed food include heat denaturation of whey protein in dried milk intended for bread making, pre rigor freezing of meat intended for sausage making, alteration in the functionality of starch by gelatinization or chemical modification, alkali processing of soya proteins to impart new textural properties, control of thiol disulfide interchange reactions in gluten to develop proper rheological properties in bread dough or increasing the sweetness of corn syrup by isomerizing glucose to fructose. So, in all these processes you can see how the functionality of the food is improved by processing. During processing, there may be inactivation of anti-nutritional substances, the foods contain various natural anti-nutritional substances like trypsin inhibitors, hemagglutinins in legumes, thiaminase in fish, avidin in egg, phytate in cereal grains and many of these anti-nutritional substances are protein in nature and therefore are subject to 
inactivation during moderate heating of moist food. In other instances, removal or chemical modification is a feasible approach for inactivating anti nutrients factors. For example, enzymatic hydrolysis or removal of lactose from milk that is intended for lactose intolerance individuals. Reduction of stachyose and raffinose. These stachyose and raffinose are the flatulence producing chemicals present in pulses, etcetera. So, their con concentration if it is reduced in leguminous seeds by the processes like germination, etcetera, then it may provide beneficial effects or it results in the inactivation of anti nutrients. Similarly, removal of phytates from grain by milling, most of the food grains, cereal grain particularly, their bran, outer hull contains some undesirable substances called phytates, etcetera. So, when we dehull the grains, these phytates are removed. There might be certain damages to the food texture during processing. The common examples include excessive softening of fruits and vegetables during thermal processing, toughening of fish muscle during frozen storage, firming of bread during storage at refrigerated temperatures, which we normally call bread staling, emulsion destabilization by heating or freezing, coagulation of sterilized milk during storage, cold sartering of red meats when it is excessively cooled while it is in a pre rigor state or adverse textural changes in tissue foods during its air drying. Now, having with us a brief overview of food quality and changes in quality during processing, let us now discuss another very, very important aspect of food that is food safety. In fact, safety is the first requisite of any food. In broad sense, the food safety is taken to mean that a food is free from any harmful chemical or microbiological contaminant at the time of its consumption. That is important. That is at the time of its consumption, it should not have any harmful chemical or microbiological contaminant. And often this concept of food safety is used in its operational sense for practical reasons. We can take a few examples. In the canning industry, the commercial sterility as applied to low acid foods is taken to mean the absence of viable spores of Clostridium botulinum. This in turn can be translated into a specific set of heating conditions for a specific product in a specific package. And given this information, one can approach optimization or retention of other quality attributes. Similarly, in a product such as peanut butter, operational safety may be taken as the absence of aflatoxin. Steps taken to prevent the growth of the mold, which is responsible for the production of aflatoxin may or may not interfere with the retention of some quality attributes. Nevertheless, the conditions of the safety must be satisfied. Food safety hazards refer to all those hazards whether chronic or acute that may make the food injurious to health of the consumers. These hazards may be inherent to food like natural toxins, allergens, intolerable ingredients. There may be hazards associated with the environmental contaminants like persistent organic pollutants, heavy metals, radionuclides, 
hazards arising from microbiological activity in the food such as viruses, bacteria, bacterial toxins, biogenic amines, mycotoxins etcetera or even hazards emerging from food processing like acrylamides, chloropapanols etcetera. So, in fact, in processing we must be that is after the processing our food must be safe for its consumption and there are like safety concern following the food processing may be that is we have to consider that whatever the ingredient that is being taken that is of good uh, value it has a GMP, GHP procedure is followed, ingredients meets the quality requirements. Like for example, if you take the safety of the bottled water, we need to say that yes, what is the source of the water, water that has been used, piping treatment processes and bottling equipment, even packaging material or what are the different quality control system. Sometimes we see that in the packaged bottle, when we open these bottles, we find some gases. So, that clearly indicates that the bottle while it is packaging the good conditions entry conditions were not maintained. Similarly, in the case of soft drinks safety aspects include microbiological contamination, packaging material, chemicals that additives etcetera, even equipment used in processing, formation of mutagens or carcinogens or even nitrosamines etcetera during processing. Another that is the even the in the processed foods even the processing conditions itself sometime create some problems like for example, in the case of processed fat, the trans fat right. Normally, the virgin vegetable oils saturated uh, unsaturated uh, groups they have the cis fatty acids, but when these oils are heated or processed cis are converted into trans fat. So, intake of trans fatty acids from the partially hydrogenated vegetable oils have deleterious effects on cardiovascular health. Even trans fatty acids are more atherogenic and high intake can promote insulin resistance. So, we have to be careful about this. Then I come to the last slide of this presentation or this lecture may be that is to summarize that how the quality and safety are interrelated particularly the processing conditions as it is known it is generally said that both health and taste do not go together. A material which is healthy it may not taste good. Similarly, here we see that process severity if the more severe a process we use that if the severity of the process increases, the quality of the food may get deteriorated. However, it is safety because more severe process will ensure that is microbial inactivation, toxic decontamination etcetera. So, it may be having a good safety, but it is quality. So, we have to actually depending upon the requirements, depending upon the food, depending upon its consumption pattern etcetera. Generally in food processing we do that we make a balance that is what up to what extent it should be processed. So, that it has a good quality as well as at the same time it is safe for the consumption. Thank you all for this.